Good morning, good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Matthew. There you go. Matthew 11. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11, and we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at verses 28 through 30. I love Chandler already hitting on the drums, and I hadn't even told a joke yet, so he's raring to go this morning. All right, now before we begin, before we read the announcements this morning, I just want to, uh, to give you a few announcements to kind of catch you up on a few things that we got coming up in the coming days. One is just to remind you that we're having uh, children's and youth um, services Wednesday night at 6.30. Those are open to anybody. Um, we're meeting from birth to, uh, to high school all the way to high, you know, uh, 12th grade. So we have something for every age group. Also want to remind you if you'd like to volunteer for the nursery on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, just let us know and we'll get you, uh, get you signed up for that. Um, another big event coming up is the Easter Egg Hunt Day of Family Fellowship, I believe on Facebook. It is called the Spring Fling. And what we're gonna do is we'll meet here at the church from 12 to two. We're gonna grill hamburgers, hot dogs. We'll have uh, chips and drinks. We'll have a slide set up for the young and the young at heart. We'll also have a um, time of hiding Easter eggs. I think we have something like, like 200 eggs, something like that. So, you know, we got eight kids, so that should be a lot. And they're all filled with all kind of goodies. I've heard a rumor that there's going to be three golden eggs and those are gonna be um, prizes. I believe first place prize is an all expense trip paid to Disney. So you wanna come out and you want to, uh, if you find that, it's got my name on it. Um, but you wanna come out and you wanna be a part of that. Uh, it's gonna be a great day of fellowship, just a time of enjoyment and uh, just relaxing and, and growing in our fellowship together. Guys, two more announcements and then we'll turn over to worship. But both of these are, are really important announcements. On the back table as you go out, um, there is a, a table set up next to the Connect desk. And it's got information about Rescue 100. And if you don't know what Rescue 100 is, it's part of the Mississippi State uh, Foster Care. It is a licensed agent, uh, agency that helps uh, people get um, connected with, with foster care. Uh, you can go back there, you can get the pamphlet, you can get any kind of information you, 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 you desire from that and it'll give you more about that. And what we're doing is we've just set the table up and it'll be set there for a couple of weeks just so that you understand or so that you know that that is a need in Mississippi is for uh, more foster parents. I believe they have a statistic, they have a stat on that that says that if every church in the state of Mississippi would foster one child, now get this, one child for every church in the state of Mississippi, there would be no foster, there would be no children without a home in the state of Mississippi. <clears throat> that blows my mind to think of that many children that do not have a home because we know there is a lot of churches throughout the state of Mississippi. So go by there, get the information from that. If nothing else, begin to pray for these, uh, these families and these children's, children that are in need of foster, fostering. All right, last announcement we have this morning is kids camp. All right, I know Miss Belinda came last week and she started sharing with you about kids camp. This has opened up from anyone from first grade to sixth grade. Uh, the camp dates are July the 15th through the 17th. And guys, I wanna let you know there are limited spots available for this. So if you think your child wants to go or if you know your child wants to go, go ahead and go online to the uh, to wadebaptist.com or to the uh, the bridge page and begin registering for that event because once the once the spots are filled there will be no more spots available okay i know that's a lot to throw at you in just a few moments but we do now want to pray and then we'll go into a time of worship and have i told y'all this morning you look good because y'all look good all right you do I mean, y'all are not dragging like I am this morning. Apparently, you went to bed earlier, and you're not missing that little bit of sleep this morning. Because when my clock went off, I thought it was the trumpet of the Lord sounding, and I thought, I'm in trouble because I'm not ready to go. But I want you to know that we are excited that you're here this morning, and we are ready to worship the Lord. Missy keeps looking at me like I forgot something. Have I forgot anything? Uh, you know, in honor of Wednesday being... Uh, St. Patrick's Day, I have worn my 
Crichton leprechaun socks. So if you happen to see my socks during the thing, you can say, I saw the leprechaun today. All right, so let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you so much that we're able to gather in your house this morning. Father, we pray this morning that you will just um, invade this place with your presence. That you, God, would just flood your presence and your peace in this place. God, I pray that regardless of what's going on in our life, what distractions we have right now, that we will just begin to, to block those things out. And God, we will set aside the next few moments just to worship you with everything that is in us through the, the lifting of our voices up and singing to you, but also in just drawing near to you as we open your word. Father, we pray that you will draw us in close to you today. And you will just speak your truth to our hearts, speak your truth to our minds. God, that you will just so anoint us this morning, God, that we, we sense you and we feel you. And we walk away from this place today not saying what a good service we've been to. But we walk away from this place saying what a mighty God we serve and he has touched us today. So, Father, we just invite your spirit in and just ask you to move in however you see fit. We ask this and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you'll stand with us, we're going to spend time in worship. I was seeing this together. You make it easy to love you. Oh, you make it easy to love you. And you are good and you are kind. You bring joy into my life. You make it easy to trust you. Yes, you do. You have never left my side. You've been faithful every time. Oh, all I want is you, Jesus. All I want is you. And you are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night And I'll follow you anywhere There's a million reasons to trust you Nothing to fear for you are by my side And I'll follow you anywhere Oh, Jesus, you came to my rescue. You took my place upon that cross. You redeemed what I had lost. Now my whole world revolving around you, yep. Oh, and you're the center of my life. And you're the treasure, you're the pride. And all I want is you, Jesus. All I want is you. Come on, sing it out. And you are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night. And I'll follow you anywhere. There's a million reasons to trust you. Nothing to fear for you are by my side. And I'll follow you anywhere. I'll follow you anywhere. Oh. oh. And I'll follow you anywhere. Oh, sing this out. Wherever you lead me, whatever it costs me, oh, all I want is you, 
Jesus, all I want is you. Come on, sing it out. Wherever you lead me, whatever it costs me, yes. Oh, all I want is you. Jesus, all I want is you. Wherever you lead me, whatever it costs me, oh, and all I want is you. Jesus, all I want is you. Oh, and you are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night. And I'll follow you anywhere. And there's a million reasons to trust you. Nothing to fear for you are by my side. And I'll follow you anywhere. I'll follow you anywhere. When you are the refuge I run to, you are the fire that leads me through the night, and I'll follow you anywhere. There's a million reasons to trust you, nothing to fear for you are by my side. And I'll follow you anywhere, I'll follow you anywhere. Amen. Well, we haven't done that song here in a little while. It's probably been a few months since we had a chance to do that one. And uh, just this morning as we were preparing, you know, just in my head, I was thinking about the lyrics and, uh, and I wanted to share for just a moment, you know, that honestly it's pretty powerful lyrics when you think about it uh when we sing that bridge right there it says wherever you lead me whatever it costs me all i want is you and uh and that's a pretty big thing to sing and to you know of course when we sing lyrics you know it should be coming from our heart it should be things that we express uh, from our spiritual growth and you know that's kind of a, something that i struggle with where it says wherever you lead me whatever it costs me uh it's easy to stand up here and sing that on a sunday morning but what living that out looks like during a weekly basis is very different um you know i just think about the different places that god has led me to you know i grew up in texas and then i came to alabama to go to school and then here i am now leading uh, worship at a church in mississippi and i never would have thought that that's how my path would go from whenever i was growing up and in high school uh but just i just started thinking about that you know wherever you leave me whatever it costs me and and I just pray that for each of us as we sing that this morning, you know, even as it says in the chorus, whenever it says there's a million reasons to trust you, I pray that for us as a body of Christ, and not as the bridge, but as a body of Christ, that we would say, you know, I trust you. I know that there's a reason why you're leading me here. There's a reason why uh, you're taking me to this place. And I realize that there is going to be a cost no matter what. When you follow Jesus, there is a cost. And, uh, but the great thing is, is that the reason that we're here is not for our earthly things, our earthly belongings, earthly pleasure, but it's for uh, storing up he heavenly treasures up above. And so I pray that that would be our thought process as we sing that. You know, we say that wherever you lead me, I'm willing to trust you. I'm willing to, to go wherever you take me, no matter what the cost is, because I know that where he takes us is going to be far better than any place that we would take ourselves. It's far better in the long run. It may not be great on on earth it may be something that we aren't comfortable with but we're not living for the earth anyway we're living for heaven and so um i just want to pray as we continue on in worship that uh father maybe that would be our mindset going forward maybe that would be something that we need to think about and, and invest time in in our, in our own life so if you bow your heads with me Father, I pray that as we sing on Sunday morning, God, the words that come out of our mouth, God, in worship, God, would be true of what is in our heart. 
God, would they not be empty and meaningless in our life? Father, rather would they be evidence of the fruit in our life, God, of us following you? God, that we can stand here this morning and sing, God, you've given us every reason to trust you. God, sending Jesus to a cross to die in our place. God, for our sins. Father, if that's not reason enough to trust you, God, to know that you're working, God, all things for our good. Father, I'm not sure that there's a reason why. So, Father, would we take that this morning? God, we take that truth, God, would we place it in our hearts, God, and, and would we begin to pray? Would we begin to seek guidance, God, and, and seek where you're leading us? God, where you're guiding us. God, we know that your way is better than ours. So would we seek first your kingdom? God, not seek ourselves, but seek your kingdom. God, and follow you where you lead us. So God, as we continue in this time of Worship through song, God. God, would we sing these lyrics? God, not with an emptiness, God, but with joy, God, with God, with truthfulness, God, of what you've done in our life. So, Father, we love you. God, we praise you. We dedicate this time to you. May you be glorified and worshiped. We pray it on your son's name. You unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear no, I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. No, I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, and you have chosen me, and your love has called my name, and I've been born again into your family, and your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave to fear No, I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I am surrounded and by the arms of the Father. And I am surrounded 
Almighty, by songs of deliverance, oh, 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 I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. And my fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and see that I am. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. And I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. The king of my heart Be the mountain where I am The fountain I drink on Oh, is my son Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life
you're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're good. You're good. You're good, oh, and you are good, good, oh, and you are good, you're good, oh, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're good. Oh, and you are good. You're good. Oh. we thank you that, God, you're so good. God, that we can stand here this morning. God, we can sing. God, that you will never let us down. God, you've never let us down. So, Father, this morning, God, we be joyful and reminded of that truth. I pray that as Boo comes to speak this morning, God, that you would speak through him. I give him the words. God, that we would not just be hearers of the word, God, that we would be doers of the word as well. God, we thank you for this time of worship through song. God, I pray that we continue to worship. God, as we go into, God, the message. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this time. We pray it all in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. As always, worship was great this morning. I hope you, um, I hope you've been drawn into the throne room of of grace this morning through uh, through the worship. Uh, as always, Josh and Allie and Steve and Chandler do a great job week after week of leading us in worship. Um, just when you think it can't get any better, they start they start the week over and. And things get better. Um, somebody, I, somebody else I want to thank this morning. You know, every once in a while you want to go through and you want to thank people for what they do because we have a lot of people that do things behind the scenes that we, uh, that we don't know what they're doing each week. Yes, Annabelle's pointing to herself saying, me, 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 me. I don't know what Annabelle did this morning, but she wants, uh, she wants to be recognized for it. No, we have countless people who, who each week um, go upstairs in the, uh, the sniper's nest up there, as I like to call it, and they, uh, they run the, the lyrics for us, and they keep us, keep us going with, with uh, uh, keep us on, on task with worship, but also give us our points for the service. Um, and I, this week, it's Paul and Briley that are up there, and, and it's, sometimes it's Garrett, and sometimes it's, it's other people in the church. We just don't want anybody to miss um, what people do around here to make sure that the worship goes smoothly. So if you've got your Bibles, um, I know we talked about earlier, open them up to Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to be looking at verses 28 through 30. And this morning, you'll be glad to know that I am going to sit still, okay? 
I'm not going to be wiggling around on the booth or on the stool here. I didn't have any coffee this morning, so you're getting me completely uncaffeinated. So we should be able to stay on task this morning. There is one other announcement that I forgot to give you this morning. And while you're turning to Matthew chapter 11, um, verses 28 through 30, I'm going to highlight that announcement to you. Beginning Sunday evening, April the 11th, we're going to begin our small groups on uh, Sunday evening. And that'll be for adults, children, and youth. And if you'd like to be involved um, with the youth or the children working in some way, please let me know. Or if you'd just like to be involved in the, in the small group that, um, that we'll be doing uh, with the adults. What we're going to be doing during that time is just kind of um, growing in our knowledge of the, our fellowship of each other, but also growing in our understanding of Jesus. We're going to do that six to eight weeks, and then we'll take a little break. All right, so let's go ahead and begin reading this morning. And even though we're going to look at verses 28 through 30, we're going to read verses 25 through 30 just so that we understand the context and then we will um, get to started, okay? Beginning in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, it says, At this time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all who, are la who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you will open your word to us this morning. Father, I pray that you will hide me behind the cross this morning. God, they will not see or hear anything I say this morning, but they will only hear what your word has to say. Father, may it speak to our hearts May it speak to our ears, but may it, more importantly, may it draw us closer to you. Lord, we ask this in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, what we're going to do over the course of the next three or four weeks as we begin to inch closer and closer to Easter is I want us to begin preparing our hearts for the greatest day in the Christian faith. And we know the day, greatest day of Christian faith is Easter. It is Resurrection Sunday. That is the day that sets apart our faith, our um, devotion to Jesus Christ. That is the day that makes everything in the Bible, makes it to where we know that it is true. Because it is on that day when Jesus walked out of the tomb that it made us understand that everything in this book is true. Because if Jesus can cause himself to walk out of the tomb, then everything else in this story, in this book is true. So it is the foundation of our faith. It's the foundation of our belief. And as we begin to get ready and we begin to prepare our hearts for this day, I want us to begin looking over the course of the next four weeks, I want us to begin looking at the heart of the Savior. Now when we start thinking about the heart of of the Savior, it's very important for us to understand what I mean when I say the heart of the Savior. I'm not talking about the physical organ, and I'm not talking about the emotional state or the pitter-patter of your heart because you're overcome with emotion. When we start reading in the Bible and we start seeing this idea or this understanding of the heart, it is always God's way of pointing us to the very center or the very core of who somebody is. So when we start talking about the heart of Jesus, we are going to be talking about looking down at the core, the essence of who He is. We are going to be looking at the passion and the motivation that has driven Him or is driving Him through His life. And I believe it is very necessary for us to begin looking at the heart of Jesus uh, as we begin preparing for, for Easter because it, 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 in order for us to fully grasp and fully appreciate what Jesus has done for us, we've got to look at who He is at the core. 
not just this idea of who we think he is, but we've got to look at the idea or the understanding of who the Bible declares to us that Christ is and, and, and the heart that he shares for us. So over the course of the next few weeks, we are going to be looking at the heart of Jesus. But I want us to move past just the events that we're going to be looking at, because like next week we're going to be looking at the triumphal entry, we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus weeping over Jerusalem, and we're going to be uh, looking at Jesus um, flipping over the money changers' tables in, in, in the temple. But I want us to move past just seeing these events, and I want us to look at the motivating factor that we have in here. Yes, Jesus is doing everything He's doing to glorify God, but I want us to watch how He's interacting with the people. And I want us to understand how Jesus is interacting with these people is the same way that Jesus still interacts with people today. Nothing about the interaction of Jesus then and today has changed. The Bible tells us He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So the same way He interacts with them is the same way that He is going to interact with us. And I truly believe that we've got to look at this driving motivation, this passion that is there for people for us to get everything that is going to, uh, to happen over the course of the next few weeks. Because, we, you know, let's face it, we live in a very Bible-saturated area. We have looked at the cross. We have looked at the resurrection. We have looked at the triumphal entry probably 75 times over the course of your lifetime. Some of us more, some of us less. But we hear these stories every year about this time. And if we're not careful, we become so familiar with them till we overlook and we miss the beauty of what Jesus is doing. And yes, Jesus is doing it all for God the Father, but He's doing it for you and me. He's doing it so we can come in and have a relationship with Him. So that's what I want us to see over the course of the next few weeks is this passion, this passion that filled Him all the way to the cross and all the way through the resurrection is the same passion that fills Him today. The same calling that He issued then is the same calling that He's issuing to you and I this morning. So as we look at these verses, we're going to not only see Jesus display His heart, it's almost like He is ripping open himself and saying, this is who I am. The, 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 this, this passage that we're looking at today, I pray that I do it justice, okay? Pray that I do it justice. Because it is painting a picture for us of not only the heart of Jesus, the driving motivation of everything he does, but in the midst of this story, in the midst of this account, you and I are being given three invitations. And each one of these invitations is a little more intimate, drawing us in a little closer so that we can come to this deeper knowledge and deeper understanding of who Jesus is. It's almost like in the first one, Jesus reveals a little bit. The next one, Jesus reveals a little bit more. And in the third one, he wraps his arms around you and says, you're mine and your mind for all eternity. As we look at these invitations this morning, you're going to see in verse 28, you're going to see that Jesus says, come and know me. That's a great invitation, right? Come and know me. That is the God and creator of everything that is saying, hey, I want you to know me. But then in verse 20, uh, 29, we're going to see the next invitation we have, and that is come and walk with me. Do you see the progression? Come and know me. Now come and walk with me. And then the final one we see is come and rest in me. That is the most intimate call that we are going to see in this passage. Is He wants you to come and rest in Him. That means that you're knowing Him, you're walking with Him, and that you are resting in Him in every way. That is beautiful right there. And guys, I want that to be what we see this morning. Because I want to be honest with you, I want to be clear I want to be transparent with this point. My prayer this morning is not that we just see the passion or the heart of the Savior, but I pray that we hear 
the invitation that He's giving us and we respond to that invitation. Because I had a thought as I was preparing this message this week. An invitation is great. But an invitation is only good if you respond to it. Because if you do not respond to the invitation, you miss everything that is behind that invitation. Does that make sense? Is that as clear as mud? God, I hope so. All right, let's look at our verse then. Look at what it says in verse 28. It says, Come to me all... And I told you all what all means in English, right? It means all. And what does it mean in Greek? It means all. So he is saying, Come all, come to me all, who are labor and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. It's be- the beauty of this is Jesus is offering us rest in the beginning of this, and He's offering us rest in the end of this. So let's look at what He's talking about in this first I- invitation that He's given us. This first um calling, if you will, that He's given to us. And I told you, context sets everything that we're talking about. So as you look at verse 25, what is taking place in verse 25 is Jesus Himself is thanking God the Father for making it to where the wise, those that think they have everything figured out, Jesus is saying, I am glad. I am thankful that you are hiding these things from them because they don't realize they need me. I want those who realize they need me, those that have hit rock bottom in life, I want them to be the ones that are going to come to me, the ones that you are going to reveal yourself to. He's saying that he is so thankful that these religious leaders that think they have it all figured out are missing the mark. And then we see in verse 26 and verse 27... How Jesus is saying, yes, Father, it's your gracious will. And then he says, and all things have been handed over to me. And that is talking about all the power, all the authority for salvation has been handed over to him. So it is declaring to us in that section that Jesus is sovereign over everything. That if you and I are going to come to the place of salvation, it is going to be coming through Jesus Christ. It's not going to be any work on our own. It's only going to be through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. And Jesus is saying in that thing, he says, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And he says, no one knows me except the Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. So he is painting us this picture of the fact of the sovereignty of God that everybody who is saved is going to be saved through Jesus. But then he is also showing us the responsibility of man. It is those that not only the Father calls, it's those that realize their desperate need for a Savior. And you have, to, you have to understand it in light of looking at those prideful ones or those prideful religious leaders that did not see the need for salvation. And you got to understand that when you come to the point of life to where you know you cannot go any further, you're not reaching that on your own. You don't just wake up one morning and say, you know what, I think I'm going to go to church and get saved. No, you do that because the Holy Spirit has been working in your life, drawing you to the point of knowing that you have nowhere else that you can go. But I want you to look at this. It says, come to me all. This is a call for everyone to come. Now, this is not a universal verse saying everyone is going to go to heaven because we know that's not true. But this is a call saying that all can come. All have the opportunity to come and know Christ as their Savior. But it is only those who come to the place of knowing that they're burdened and heavy laden that will come to the place of knowing Christ. And this, this passage is painting us a beautiful picture. All right, think about the, uh, not the first day of school with your kids, but think about that third day of school. When they come in and they got like 973 books in their backpack. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you look and the poor little kids all slumped over walking like this, trying to carry the book. Or was that just my, when I was in school? It wasn't when I was in school, because I didn't bring any books. <laughs> Y'all can tell that from my English, right? 
No, but that's what this picture, this thing is painting us a picture of. It is talking about being burdened and heavy laden. It is talking about the people that Jesus is issuing this call to are those who are burdened down in every way. Think about the context in which Jesus is talking to. He is talking to a Jewish audience who has lived their life burdened down by the law. Not the law of God, but the law of man. The 613 commandments that they had to live up to in order to get close to God. He is looking at them and saying, all of you who were burdened, all of you are heavy laden with this great weight that you can't carry on your own. Come to me. Bring that burden. Bring that to me. But he's also talking to them about the fact that they are burdened down with sin. It's not just the law that has burdened them down. It's the sin in their life. It is the punishment, the weight of being away from God that, it, that, that is weighting them down. And Jesus is looking at this crowd and saying to them, Come to me. If you are tired of carrying this burden, come to me and I will give you rest. And it's not Jesus standing over there saying, Hey, come over here. Come a little closer to me. That's not, the, that's not the picture that we're seeing in this. It is a picture of Jesus getting down and walking to these individuals that are hurting, those individuals that are burdened down with the backpack of weight of books or sin and this law. And it's Jesus walking to them as they are crawling, trying to get to through life. And it is Jesus walking to them like a loving father and reaching down to them and lifting up their face. And as he lifts up their face, then he says, come to me. Not you've got to meet me or you've got to come to me. Jesus is like, I'm coming to you and I'm going to lift you up and I am going to take that burden upon myself. In a few weeks when we look at the cross, we are going to see the burden of all sin poured out on Jesus. And this is the invitation here for Him to take that burden, to take that shame, to take all that off of you and give you something greater. Look at what he's asking him to do. He is saying, come to me, all who are burdened and all who are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. We all need rest this morning, right? Because we're sleepy. But this is a better rest that Jesus is talking about. This is a rest of knowing him or having a relationship with him. It is the same Rest are the same peace we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Listen to this. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and know me and come and have rest is meaning come and be made at peace with God. Do you realize what the Bible says? That there are two Sets of people, there are those who in Ephesians are called the objects of God's wrath. Those are the ones that do not know Him as their Savior. And then you have those that are come to the place of knowing that they are a child of God. Just like we were singing a while ago, I am a child of God. So Jesus is saying, let me take that burden. Let me take that weight off of you. Let me take you from being an object of God's wrath and let me make you a child of God. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened with sin, and let me make peace between you and God. That is a beautiful picture of what Jesus is going to do on the cross. But it's also a beautiful picture of what he's going to do when he walks out of the tomb in a couple of weeks. Because it's going to say that everything that Jesus is doing here is going to be made true on that beautiful morning. And you and I, if we want to know him, we've got to come to the place where we're not prideful and thinking we've got it all figured out. And we've got to come to the place where we understand the burden that is upon us. And let him take that burden away from us. So he says for us to come and know him. 
But notice the second invitation that He gives us in verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly. And i got to tell you all this, because there's somebody here this morning that was in my youth group years ago, and I did a terrible job of, of youthing these kids. I did this passage here years ago with them, and when we started talking about a yolk, they were thinking about an egg. Jesus is not chunking eggs at anybody here. That's not what He's talking about. All right, so when He starts talking about take my yoke upon you, He is issuing, He is taking that first call that He gives us, that first invitation of come and know me, and He's expanding upon it. Or He's opening His arms up a little more. He is saying, not only saying, come know me, but He is saying, come walk with me. See, we lose everything in this passage because we no longer plow with oxen. We no longer plow with any kind of animal. We, we, you know, we plow with a deer, a John Deere, or a Massey Ferguson, something like this. But this in Jesus' day, was fully understood by them that it is taking a plow implement and placing it over two oxen, one that is wiser, one that is stronger, one that is bigger, and placing it on, placing it on one that is smaller, uh, younger, and more inexperienced. And this younger one walks with the older one until it learns and is able to do it on its own. So Jesus, when He issues this this invitation for them to take upon Him His yoke, what Jesus is doing is He is issuing a call or an invitation for the people to come walk alongside Him, to join yourself to Jesus in His ministry. But He's also issuing a call for those people to become a disciple of His. It means to take my lifestyle, take everything about me upon yourself and become like me. It is, a, it is a beautiful invitation in itself. Jesus is saying you have spent your entire life being devoted to the teaching of these men, to the teaching of these scribes and Pharisees. He is saying take and throw off. All those things that they've told you, all that stuff that has burdened you, all that thing that stuff that is weighting you down, throw it off and take this upon you. And he says, as we take it upon him, or as we take it upon ourselves, we will learn from him. Learn from him. What does it mean to learn from him? It means that we will learn what it means to walk the walk of Jesus. But it also means we will learn to talk the talk of Jesus. But more importantly, he is saying, as you walk with me, you will learn to be like me. You, me, we all need to know that in our relationship with Christ. But we also live in a world that is desperate to see that, to know that. Remember the call a while ago, come to me all how are all going to know? How are all going to hear through the life that the disciples of Jesus Christ live? That's what Jesus is saying. He is saying, give up, trade in all those things. Trade in everything that you're holding on to in the beginning. Trade that in for what I'm trying to give you. I am trying to give you a better life. I am trying to give you a life where you walk with me. I know this is a bad illustration. And y'all know I use Bad illustrations all the time. He is essentially saying, give up your 1978 Pinto or Gremlin or Duster or whatever cheap car you can think of and come over here to this 2006 Chevrolet. No. He is saying, give all that up and come over here to the best thing you can imagine. And you are going to walk with me. And notice what he says. He says, as you learn from me, you are going to see that I am gentle and low. And guys, I want you to understand what Jesus is doing in this passage. He is once again painting a picture. And I got to hurry up. He is once again painting a picture of a father. This time the father is not reaching down and lifting the child's head up. This time the father is walking hand in hand with the child. And it is talking about the fact that that child reaches up and takes hold of the father's hand and they walk hand in hand. 
So Jesus is not talking about yoke yourself, tie this around your neck, tie this burden around your neck. He is saying, let go of what you're holding on to and take hold of my hand and walk with me. Think about a little small child in a pool, right? That little, that little booger is wanting to go to the deep end. And, and, and it, it's holding on to your hand. And as you get closer to the deep, the little kid is no longer holding on to you or are no longer holding on to your hand. But what's happening? You're holding on to their hand. But you're not. You're holding it firm. But yet they don't know that you're holding it firm. All they feel is the gentle, loving hand of a father that is not going to let them sink to the bottom of that pool. That's what Jesus is saying. He is saying, take the relationship, my relationship upon yourself. Walk hand in hand with me and you will know that I am gentle and lowly. That I am going to do everything I do for you. Why? Because everything I do is because I love you. I am opening myself up so that you can know me because I love you. I am opening myself up so that you can walk with me because I love you. That is what Jesus is saying in this passage. But look at our final invitation this morning that he gives us. Verse 29 and 30. And he says, and you will find rest for your soul. That's beautiful right there, isn't it? He's already given us rest in the beginning. And now he says, you will find rest with a rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See the transition? In the beginning, they were burdened down with heavy. And Jesus is now saying, take my yoke upon you. You will find rest for your soul and my burden is light. It was heavy and now it's light. This is a final invitation that Jesus gives us. And Jesus has already said, if you will come and know me, you'll come and walk with me. I'm going to give you something you cannot find apart from me. And it is rest for your soul. Of all the things we've seen in this passage, this is the most beautiful thing of all. Beautiful, beautiful, it's the prettiest thing that we've seen. And it is the fact that He is offering us something that we cannot have apart from Him. We can go and we can do everything we want to do, but we will never find rest for our soul until we're in a right relationship with God. Think about this. From all the way from Genesis chapter 3 to today, every one of us who are apart from Christ does not have rest in our soul. And we cannot have rest in our soul. And it doesn't matter what we have or what we strive after. Apart from that rest in the Lord, we cannot know what it is to have rest for our soul. Remember when I said a while ago, that the first rest that he gives us is a peace with God. This that he's talking about here, rest for your soul, is the peace of God in your life. And there's a huge difference. Here you and God are no longer warring at each other. You have come to the place where you've been made an object of wrath and now you are at peace with God, meaning he is no longer going to pour his vengeance out on you. This rest for your soul means that you are at peace or the peace of God has enveloped you. It's engulfed you. The peace of God is all that you know. The peace of God is what we see in Psalms 23 where it says, Yo, the, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I'm filled with the peace of God. It was the peace of Almighty God that was with Daniel in the lion den. It was the peace of Almighty God that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was the peace of Almighty God that engulfed Jesus when he says, Father, forgive them. The peace of Almighty God does not mean that life is going great, life is going perfect, but it means that no matter what's going on, you will not worry about it because you know that your future is wrapped in the one that has lifted your face, said come to me and has you by the hand and is walking with you through everything. That's the peace 
of Almighty God. That's the rest that is in your soul. That you know regardless of what happens, that everything is going to be okay. It's the peace that comes with the, that, that, that Paul used when he says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's the peace of God that guides us through everything in our life. But don't miss this, okay? I know I only got about five minutes. But um, it is the peace of Almighty God that we see there when he says, come and I will give your soul rest. But he's also painting us one last picture, okay? And this last picture is found in the word easy. Notice what he says, my yoke is easy, okay? Follow me for just a second. Remember, Jesus said, take my yoke, and the yoke is my work. It's, my, it, it, it's take my life upon you. You know the problem with a yoke? The yoke is pretty much one size fits all. Some are a little tighter, some are a little looser. But this word here, easy, is painting us a picture of Jesus putting a yoke on you that fits you perfectly. How many, I want to show of hands here. How many of you have a ratty old t-shirt that when you put it on, you feel like you're at home? How many of you got seen your stretchy pants when you put them on after a long day, you're like, ah, I'm at home. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you put them on, all the cares of the world are gone, right? I mean, you can have had the crummiest day of crummiest days. But when you put this shirt on that's stained and torn and you slip those shorts or, or whatever it is on, you think, okay, they're like Calgon. They've taken everything away. Some of y'all don't get that because y'all don't remember that commercial. But it's a good commercial. But that's what Jesus is saying by my burden is, or my yoke is easy. He is saying, I am not going to give you a one size fits all walk. I am going to let you walk with me at your own pace. Come to know me in your own way. Come to express me in your own way. That's what he's saying. He says, and as you come to walk with me and I give you rest, my burden is going to be light. I'm going to take everything that's heavy and I'm going to give you something that you cannot get on your own. That's the three invitations we have leading up to the events that will start next week of Jesus making his way to the cross. And I believe this is laying out everything about Jesus because it is revealing to us his heart for the Father, but it's also revealing his heart for you and I to come and know him, to have that relationship with him, to come and walk with him, to grow in that relationship and to come and rest in Him. And that's exactly what it says. Feel at home in Him. But guys, I told you in the beginning of this, an invitation is only good if you accept it. Because if you don't accept the invitation, you don't get the party. If you don't accept the invitation, you don't get the cake. You have to take the invitation. And the invitation is what? Come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Or I will be your rest. My question is this. Do you know the rest that comes from God Almighty? Is your life filled with that rest? If not, Jesus is painting us one last picture that I almost forgot. All of this shows us one last picture of the Father in gentle and low. It points us a, or paints us a picture not only of Him lifting our chin, not only of Him taking our hand, but of Him standing and saying, Come to me, I will never cast you out. Meaning, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Meaning, I am never going to drop you. That's how you have rest in your soul. In knowing that your past, your present, and your future 
is wrapped up in the hands of God. So I ask again, do you know the rest that comes from a relationship with God? If you don't, today is the day that you can know that rest. And guys, the invitation we have this morning is the same thing here. Do you know Christ as your Savior? If not, y'all see them skills? Ninja skills. Do you know Him as your Savior? If not, come this morning and know Him. Are you walking with Him as your Savior? Meaning, are you growing in your relationship? If not, come walk with Him. Is your life in turmoil? Is everything, you feels like everything's coming apart? Come and find your rest in Him this morning. I got one more thing. This song has been running through my mind all week, and I'm not going to sing it, okay? I'm not going to sing it, but I am going to read it. The Savior is waiting. That's the last thing we see here. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let Him come in? Jesus has already told us He's standing there waiting, and all He's asking for now is for us to ask Him to come in. So guys, go ahead and rise to your feet. And we're going to go into a time of invitation. And if you're here this morning, as I said, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and you want to know Him this morning, come. If you want to come this morning and walk closer with Him, you come and you ask Him to give you the strength that you need to walk. If you're coming this morning and you just say, my life is just rattling out of control and I just want to, to be reaffirmed in the rest, then you come. Whatever the need, Jesus promises He's going to meet that need. So Father, we come to You this morning. We pray that as we go into this time of invitation, Lord, that Your Word has spoken to us. God, it has given us peace in our hearts, peace in our mind. God, I pray that if there's someone here that needs to make a decision, that this morning they will make that decision and they'll make that decision known to You and make that decision known to the people here. So God, whatever the need is this morning, we know that you can meet it. So just give us the courage we need to let go and to step out and to follow you. We ask this in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, and it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. All right, guys, as always, uh, thank you for being here today. I pray that as we get ready to dismiss.
here in just a few moments that each one of you will have a, a great day that um, you know, you'll catch up on your, you'll get that nap at some point in time today and you'll get that hour back because you know it'll still be daylight at midnight tonight and that just throws everything out of, out of whack. But, but guys, as always, I have enjoyed being in the house of the Lord this morning and I pray that you have too. I pray that you have been challenged by the Word, but I pray that you've also been encouraged with this Word. Now guys, we have one last invitation that Jesus gives us here, and that is to take the words that we've heard and go and challenge and encourage others around us. So I pray that we do that. So as we get ready to, to leave this morning, I just want to remind you that we've given you the opportunity to worship in song. We've given you the opportunity to worship in the word and we also want to give you the opportunity to worship by giving this morning and and the offering plates are on the the tables in the back remember as you go out to look at the information for rescue 100 get one of the pamphlets and just begin to pray uh, not necessarily if god wants you to be involved in it you know if god wants you to do that he'll reveal that to you but just pray for the people that are in, involved in it i can't imagine what the children go through uh, or what the, the foster parents go through. So get a pamphlet, get the information about that and begin praying for them. Remember, we have Wednesday night services for the youth. Um, we have the Easter egg hunt that is coming up on April the 27th um, from 12 to 2. And then that we're planning on starting Wednesday night, uh, not Wednesday night, what's that other day of the week? Sunday night services again, small group services on April the 11th. All right, guys, good to see you. I'm going to turn it back over to Josh. All right, let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for today. God, we thank you for this time of worship, God, through song and through looking at your word, God. And I pray that, God, we would take the word that has been presented to us today, God, place it inside of our hearts, God, that we would... God, come to know you, God, to walk with you, Father, and then ultimately we would find rest in you for our souls. Uh, so, Father, I pray that as we leave today, God, that we would uh, continue to seek you, God, that we would find our joy in you. Uh, God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this time. We pray it on your son's holy and precious name. Amen.